Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Monaco Streaming Film Festival Masterclass on Expanding Entertainment. We have our very special guest, Mr. Tony Khan. Thank great you very much. To, great to see you, Gavin. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful. Thank you for, for taking the time to talk to us. Um, for those who don't know, Tony is... Uh, I mean, I've run out of the ways to describe you at this point. He owns, uh, well, AEW owner and uh, head writer and just managed the whole the whole product there. The director of football at Fulham. Mm -hmm. And I forget the name of your role at the Jaguars. The but... chief football strategy officer. Okay. And so we've got a lot of uh, hats on, but we're really going to be focusing on AEW um, today. Um, primarily, well, two things. The first half will be how... You've built a brand that's been able to expand and, and move internationally with some good success stories that are, are coming up. And the second will be a bit more of an overview of the media landscape and like how AEW's content really fits within that. Um, so, oh yes, and I'm your host, Gavin Bridge. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you even have that written down here. Um, you need no introduction here. <laughs> well, that that is true, but thank you for it. You're very kind. Um, so let's let's begin. Um you recently announced a very big AEW event, um, All In, which is happening on August 27th at Wembley Stadium in London. What's the current demand level for that show? It is massive. As we sit here today, we've sold over 60,000 tickets, and we have about $8 million in ticket sales as of today, and it's going to continue to rise steadily over the next few months as we approach AEW All In August 27th at Wembley Stadium in London. It's one of the biggest events in the history of pro wrestling, and it will be the biggest event in terms of revenue in the history of England. And I hope that it will also be, in terms of cultural significance, the biggest wrestling event in the history of England. So your tickets have been on sale for what, like five days maybe, and you've got two thirds of the stadium already full. That's actually a pretty good demand level. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We had the biggest first day on sale in the history of the wrestling business. And to have 60,000 tickets and $7.7 .7 million and about, I think, 6.1 million British pounds in ticket sales in the first day, that is unprecedented. That is a, a strong sign of, I guess, the appetite for, for the content in, in England. But it's it's also one of the well, I should say Britain really. Um, it's one of the probably one of the most iconic stadiums in the world. So, what led you to decide to to? I mean, it seemed like a bold move when you like just announced it. Like, wow, I'd never seen it coming. So, how how did that get like put in place? And it, it's something I've been planning for many years. There were only two venues that I thought AEW could debut in in England, and I thought it should either be at London Wembley Stadium or very near and dear to my heart, Craven Cottage, which is my home. I've spent so many years living in London. I've traveled all over England, all over the UK, I've driven most of the country, I've driven all over England, driven to Wales. And I love the country so much, but nothing in the world compares to London. In my opinion, it's the greatest city on the planet. And I also believe that London Wembley Stadium is the world's premier major sporting ground. I love Craven Cottage so much. It is my favorite place, but it was probably not, in the end, the best place to host a wrestling event. We did a site survey and found that just the loading costs would be seven figures just to get set up. Significantly less cost to set up in Wembley Stadium. It's built for that kind of thing, right? That's the, yes, yes. Yeah. Very, very great major at home, and also much more potential ticket revenue to capture. So Wembley Stadium also a place where I've spent much of my time and uh, have been to many of our own events there. Fulham, we've had English Football League Championship playoff yep. wins there and also have played there. We played Tottenham at Wembley when they were there. And certainly for the Jaguars, Wembley's been a home to us. We play one home game there every year. And I've been in that home locker room with the Jaguars and Fulham, and I can't wait to be in that home locker room for AEW. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't that Trevor Lawrence's first win was away in, in an English road game? It was his first win. It was actually, we were playing at Tottenham. That oh, game. Tottenham. Yeah. London, though. Yes. So it's a good, good it's place. A, but it's great to be back. It's very different for me. Very different uh, spirit for me being at Wembley versus Tottenham. And uh, <laughs> I love Wembley, and I have no love for Tottenham. And uh, <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> I uh, am certainly uh, very excited to bring Fulham uh and all of the great fans and all of the great people at the club over to Wembley and have so many people from the club supporting the event, uh, you know, but also I'm really excited to bring AEW to Fulham. I'm really excited that 
we have an opportunity to bring a lot of the wrestlers. And oh, is there, a, is there a game the day before? I hope there will be. I certainly hope. Right, your fixture table hasn't come out yet. But that yeah, would be- I would love that. And we're, we're very optimistic and hopeful we can have that. And if we did, it would be certainly a great opportunity. So there's potential for some crossovers between the, the Tony brands. Yeah, absolutely. It would be great for me to be able to see that. And wherever Fulham plays on Saturday, I will be there. And uh, certainly very excited about All In on Sunday also. So what... With what you said, you know, you've got uh, 60,000 tickets already. So um, what does that say for the popularity of pro wrestling overseas? Says something about the popularity of AEW overseas. AEW has got a great audience in the UK right now. And on ITV, I can say that AEW now has built an audience where we are the number one pro wrestling company in the UK on television by far. All right, because it's free to air and everyone can can access that. Yes, so. absolutely. We're on ITV and ITV4 for replays. We also have a streaming service, AEW Plus, where people can watch the episodes live. But given when the events take place, it's yeah. very early morning in the UK <laughs> or such late night for some people. And especially on the weeknights, that's not as convenient. And really, in general... A lot of people have found it very convenient to have AEW on ITV4 and ITV on the main channel so frequently. And those opportunities have helped us expand the audience and become the number one wrestling company with AEW in the UK. And I think that certainly bodes well for us as we now run live events there. And that's why I felt so confident booking Wembley Stadium for us that we would have a great audience. And I think we've seen that. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at like the numbers, seeing you've got a really good base there. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a smart um, strategy because you've, when you're free, obviously it, it's just, there's a lot more potential people who can watch. And, you know, that country having been a wrestling fan when I was growing up, I know there's an innate fandom over there. So. Yes. And also ITV has a great history of showing pro wrestling. Oh yeah. That was where um, World of Wrestling was. Right? World of Sport Wrestling. Yes, absolutely. World of Sport had a great wrestling product like there. Big Daddy. And- yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. And uh, absolutely. Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks and all the great names. And also a lot of great technical wrestlers mm. who came through like Mark Rollerball, Rocco, and very excited about being back on ITV, having pro wrestling back on that channel was a great opportunity for us. ITV had looked at getting back into pro wrestling in the interim, and they have uh, also, over the years, shown other wrestling programs, but certainly people have great memories of World of Sport, and I think AEW, it's safe to say, has been the most successful launch on ITV since that, as far as the growth of the, the shows. And year over year, we've seen great growth in our TV ratings in the UK, which have gone up. This year's the highest yet. 2023 built that audience up from 22, which was up from 21. So it's been great relationship for us, a great partnership. And certainly I think that helped us uh, set great, build a great footprint on the ground with UK fans. And now that we're doing shows in England, doing AW all in, in England, I think that gave us a, a great opportunity with the opportunity to do free TV. Well, definitely a, a shot fired, right? Especially with that you were advertising in the FA Cup semifinals. I think it was. Re- yeah, recently. yeah, this, absolutely. And uh, Wembley had the FA Cup semifinal add up. And uh, there's been a lot of great advertisements uh, throughout the UK. We've put up some physical media and definitely very great opportunity for us to be able to advertise the game at Wembley Stadium and some of their major events. Certainly the FA Cup semifinal being uh, one of the major ones. It's an event for the ages. On Sunday, August 27th, will you be there live? All in London, Wembley Stadium. Amazing blockbuster announcement. That is massive. Iconic. AEW All In. We celebrate Wembley Stadium, baby. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime experience when AEW All In takes over Wembley Stadium. Tickets go on sale Friday, May 5th. So with, with the distribution you have, um, what role has streaming played? I mean, you mentioned ITV and ITV4. Is is, it, is AEW available in the UK on like the ITV? Well, it just relaunched. Actually, yeah. The X player? yeah, and we have a, a streaming service of our own called AEW+. Plus. It's on Fight TV, so Fight offers a lot of combat sports and wrestling events, and we have a subscriber service where people can pay. It's very affordable, and for just a few pounds a month, you can watch all AEW events live, and there's a great library of content on AEW Plus, too. So we have an international streaming service. Domestically, we're still looking for the right solution, yeah. 
And it's a very exciting time for us because streaming business continues to grow here domestically. And frankly, the value of the AEW events continues to grow. What does All In's ticketing success say for future UK events? I think that All In's ticketing success definitely establishes a precedent that there's a huge fan base in the UK and certainly will look to continue operating there and uh, building on this. And I think it's a great success story for our company, and I'm very excited about it. Well, I would say, I think, you know, if, if you look historically at how you've done events, often you you don't ignore the market once you go there and, and it, you see a city have a particular success of an event. So like Grand Slam here, for instance, mm-hmm. being one that springs to mind. So that's good news for the UK. We are recording this in New York City. Yes, say, <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so Grand Slam here and uh, this all-in event in London, very exciting. And we do have a calendar of events yearly that have built great traditions. So absolutely, uh, we've stuck with a lot of the cities that have done right for us. And I think that's how it should be. We've got great support and uh, we've built really great events over the years. You also, I guess you're giving fans quite the treat because you've got two big events in a week of each other, right? So it's like one one event of like i guess i'm thinking of the london one as almost being like a festival sort of of, of wrestling especially because it's coming after the, the notting hill carnival so you know there's going to be some pretty lit people in the crowd there. oh it's going to be a great time <laughs> it's going to be a great bank holiday weekend yeah and then you have the bank holiday weekend here the, the following week so then there's it's all out correct That's... we've historically done all out that weekend i haven't made an announcement yet of that but yes historically that is uh definitely in keeping with his historical precedent you make a great point so you mentioned you know, understanding or, or doing analysis of the TV ratings in the UK to sort of see that there was a, an appetite or a big audience for a big event there. But were you surprised at all with like the level of demand was it like for the, the pre-sales or anything like that? I'm, it's certainly on the high side of expectations, but we expected something massive. So it is a massive success, but it's not unprecedented in our mind because we've had such great history in the market. We have such a great TV audience and there's a great history of support for live events and pro wrestling live events in England. And this is the biggest wrestling event that's been brought to England in many, many years. And I think it's one of the biggest pro wrestling events ever in Europe. Really, this is going to be one of the biggest wrestling events ever in the world. We, the revenue we've already generated just on ticket sales, it makes it one of the biggest events anybody has ever done in this business. And for AEW, a startup company taking on an established industry leader for us as a challenger brand, this is the greatest success story in the history of our company. And I think this AEW All-In event, August 27th at Wembley Stadium, is one of the greatest success stories in pro wrestling history. Well, I mean, I imagine you get eighty to 90,000. That's easily one of the top, what, like five other... I mean, nothing can touch North Korea. Was it, what, 200,000 people? Went well, to that a lot one? of people <laughs> were at that event, but it was not a revenue-producing yeah, event, uh, nor did those people have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so... um well, good. Good. Well, we're going to change the uh, uh, track now, but good luck for for all in. It sounds like you're on a, a really good level, you know. So far, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing event. So, Thank you. well, hopefully, we'll see you there along with tens of thousands of our other friends. <laughs> well, I would do my best. Well, great. Um, now, so now I want to ask you some general questions about the media business and, and how AEW fits in because you know you've you've done a really good job of creating a, a new brand. You saw an opportunity in the market um, for more there's always been other wrestling companies you now own one of the other wrestling ring of honor right like that's always been around but as someone who sort of studied the media landscape to sort of understand where things could go in i think you could have some some good perspective on some of the challenges that media entertainment business is currently going through absolutely i've learned a lot about the evolution of the business from you gavin about uh the future of streaming and about the changes in the business and about free ad supported streaming TV, which you're one of the experts on. So I'm sure your questions are going to be very insightful. There will be one on that, but not yet. <laughs> so there's, I mean, there was a, a piece recently. Um, I think it was on, on CNBC.com. It had like a whole bunch of media experts like weighing in on what they thought the future was going to be. One point that stood out to me was how the cost of sports rights has got, which, you know, I, that much I know, but I'd never really considered what that meant for budgets in general and how other budget was going to have to be cut. Mm-hmm. Now take that in hand in hand with the fact that wall street is asking for content spend reductions across, you know, media companies. And there's been more of it. There's been a shift to unscripted content prior to even that happening across like networks like USA, for instance, where I don't think they even had any scripted last year. And now we have a writer's drug. So do you, 
do you foresee sort of um, a scripted entertainment seeing, right, not getting back to the, the heights it used to be? And also, how how does your business um, like fit in? Is it built to take advantage of the changes we're, we're seeing in entertainment formats? I definitely think AEW is set up as the media landscape evolves in a very strong position. I think AEW, with our live sports presentation, a lot of our audience watches the show live, but we also have great viewership on DVR. We just have a great big audience. And that's the thing that's never reported, right? You never see those DVR. Like I was thinking the other last week, right, up against a really strong NBA game. And I would think year over year, they all you always have a bit of a dip there, but like, oh, this this is the bad rating. But no one's looking at well, what's the live plus three playback? Yeah. What's the and next we, we get back? the plus three plus seven data. And it's very interesting. But to be fair, like you said, everyone really makes the decision whether an event was a success or not as far as the mind of the fans and to some extent the media based on the overnight rating. Yeah. But there's definitely great examples where we get huge DVR left also on the plus three, plus seven. But certainly we hang our hat on our overnight Nielsen ratings. We have really strong audience and we've had a great history here in the U.S., but certainly overseas is where we've seen this recent huge growth with the biggest audiences we've ever had in both Canada and the UK this year. And we're going up against great sports competition in mm -hmm. both countries and continuing to grow that. And now we've built new partnerships overseas also for international TV. We're on Sky in Italy and Germany and just in recent months have launched on ESPN in Australia and New Zealand. So a lot of exciting opportunities there. And I believe as the landscape changes, we can expand EW's streaming revenue multiple times over. We'll touch on that a little bit, but it is a smart strategy to sort of be one of the only brands to hold back because obviously the the more that, that everything else is snatched up and, and the better that you, you know, look at look at all in, right? If if you can pull out these ticket sales and you can you pull this stuff, it's a brand that's growing. It's not a brand that you're trying to hog a dead horse on. Right. So I can see it being, you know, like having some suitors, especially with how things are, are, are shifting in media. So now actually on, on the topic of, of the overnights, um, you know, if you consider cord cutting, right, we're look lose million or so subscribers to pay TV in the US every quarter across the major providers, right? Um over since what the three and three and a half years you've been around now, is it? Just just over that. Yeah. So that's like what, 12, 14 million people have exited the pay TV system on average since since you began. You know, it's a rough estimate. But your audiences don't really change that much. No. Right? Like so what does that um what does that say about your business and, and how do your broadcast part sort of see stability in you know in a in a challenging environment? It is really beneficial to us that we still have these great audiences, particularly in key demos like the 18 to 49 demo or the 25 to 54 demo, 1834, we have a really strong audience and have seen growth there at times. So I think it, even as the industry has declined, we've maintained a really strong audience, very comparable with what we had years ago. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other sports and media have seen that decline. But as the overall cable audience has declined, we've been able to keep great stability with AEW and also, again, overseas, we've seen that. And that has been great for us to have a linear TV partner like ITV, but also great cable partners with Sky and Italy and Germany and TSN in Canada. Well, it's a good point, actually. I hadn't, it just struck me that I think the MLS's ratings weren't as strong as they were before they moved. MLB, I haven't looked at this season, but I know their stuff has really been trending down as well. So it's not a given that just because you're a sport, you maintain your audience. Sure. Right. So it's a, really good sign for for the health of the company i think so too and um i'm sure your your broadcast partners are over the moon um, do you think that the future of most channels so i'm talking like broadcast and cable here would it be more sports rights and unscripted do you like i guess the blend that and you know obviously there's like reruns to kind of fill the time but do you see a time where we're we're dominated by unscripted content and, and sports rights well certainly my home networks tbs and tnt that is primarily what their profile is already and yeah, i think move right it's probably ahead of the curve in many ways because the really the content profile of those networks is exactly what you just said it's a lot of live sports and pro wrestling is a huge part of it with 
frankly, a lot of reruns and unscripted content, not a lot of new scripted content being generated out of those channels. So to your point, that is the model we're operating under now at TBS and TNT. So I'm not sure who else would adapt that, but we have really smart bosses, so they may have done it for a good reason. That's a, yeah, I mean, I mean just thinking in general, like, you know, Fox has that. With, and even after they got rid of uh, Thursday Night Football, they still have a great investment in things like base as well, right? so to kind of fill the airtime up. So I think we might see the other uh, other uh, companies perhaps move to that from a broadcast perspective, which you know, may be good for for you yes <laughs> potentially you know, they might be interested in more content absolutely so you had one unscripted show like two years ago you have another unscripted show on the air now are there well first of all how is it doing but secondly do you have others play, or do you think there'll be others in the pipeline yeah i think it's a great opportunity to continue developing more unscripted content around AEW. this show we've launched this year and its premiere season has done very well AEW all access the show has held up very well and has great comps compared to other shows that have followed AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, which is a real destination show. And oh, so you maintain that audience? Well, I think to be fair, no show that's been after yeah. AEW Dynamite has retained anything close to 100% of the AEW Dynamite audience. It's a real tent pole event. 52 weeks a year, Wednesday Night Dynamite, it draws consistent ratings on TBS. So looking to build something out of that 8 to 10 slot, something to go in the 10 p.m. slot after Dynamite on Wednesdays, it has been a lot of shows they've tried. And right now, AEW All Access has done very well compared to more expensive shows in the time slot. So I think that's very exciting for us and bodes well for that show. Excellent. I mean, it's definitely, I do see Unscripted in general, as you have guessed from these questions, I think Unscripted is going to be the future of, of most content. So if you're able to create like a, a pipeline there, I think it's just, it's just another great additional revenue stream that, and maybe, you know, Fulham, Jaguars, you might see stuff like that too. Cause I think every, the, the appetite for sports-based content too is actually through the roof. Now. Absolutely. I was actually just working on an article on digital sports fandom in like, you know, in the modern age and just like how it's, t- you know, if, if you, if you're an old established brand, you kind of slept on it for a while and you've, all these amazing brands have entered like Bleacher Report or like Wave Sports Entertainment so I can see there being more and more opportunities for, for that just because everyone wants to consume everything. Yes. Really, so and uh, there's really so much fan avidity mm-hmm. and the very avid fans, the hardcore lovers of these teams are going to seek out that content. They want to see what's happening behind the scenes in the dressing room. And really, as people grow as players, they want to see young players develop. They want to see the veterans and the interaction between the veterans and the young players. So many things that are fascinating to the fans and i think uh you can make new fans also with these unscripted programs happened with um i forget the name of it but the formula one show absolutely right um it whatever that one on netflix was all or nothing yeah and that's and then because of that formula one here actually saw a big increase in in interest especially in the domestic races so i think it it really helped propel its rights increase i mean before it was available for a pittance which is kind of why the rights went up but it the unscripted really does help create fans and you know yeah you know, i'm just thinking about the the interest in trevor lawrence in particular and like you could probably get a mind out of that stuff as well so yeah, absolutely the jaguars have players that have a lot of fans all over america and the nfl is growing all over the world and in trevor lawrence we have an amazing quarterback who is beloved and he entered in the nfl with a great fan base because of the huge support he had at Clemson and the massive success he had at Clemson. Mm. He was a national television star before he ever played a down in football in the NFL. And it's a reputation he earned. And he came to the NFL with a great track record of success. And certainly for us, he's been an amazing quarterback. He's also an amazing person off the field. So yeah, absolutely. People would love to see that. I think, you know, see what Trevor's like. And that's one thing social media offered is these kind of insights into people's personality, get to know those players better. And certainly the more people get to know Trevor, the more they see of him. I think the more they see what a great guy he is, what a great leader he is, and just a really uh, genuine person. Well, and also, I mean, we'll get back to AW, but just like the the playoff run, the run to get to the playoffs. And I think even just getting through, right? Like, because uh, there was a, a, a fair number of like turnarounds and just like the never give give up, never say die spirit. It's, it's almost like getting there underdog kind of story that people like to to sort of see right because if you you know what was it the what they 
were you the worst team the year before? Yeah. So like to go from that to like to, to completely flip it is is historic to go from being the last place team in the NFL to win a playoff game the following season is historic. And like you said, so many come from behind victories. We won a lot of games at the death, as they say. And uh, it was really team building, but it also speaks to what a great coach Doug Peterson is. Yeah. And he's very experienced. Of course, uh, people who, to your point, follow unscripted football content. A lot of people felt like they got to know Doug firsthand because the league captured so much great content around the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl win. And people saw what a great leader Doug was and what a historic victory that really was mm. for the Eagles organization. And what a massive, uh, what a massive command of football knowledge and also just what a great leader Doug is. Well, I think it would be fair at this point just to, to kind of give a, a, a hats off to you because I know when we've spoken before about Fulham, it's been up and down. And, you know, so you could say the same thing with the Jaguars. And at the moment, everything seems to be coming good, right? Fulham are doing very well above Chelsea mm -hmm. in the Premier League. Um, Jaguars reaching the playoffs and winning a playoff game. AW doing massive ticket sales abroad. So, I mean, all things are, are, are you know, firing on all cylinders. It's for you a right now. very exciting time for AEW and the Jags and at Fulham and, uh, Absolutely. We're having great seasons in sport and it's a great time for AEW and pro wrestling. So I saw a recent um, analysis online. It was about a month or two ago on Twitter um, that showed how AEW consistently featured more diverse talent than uh, the other wrestling televised shows. Is this a purposeful strategy or is it just the case that you sort of... you? you you've hired so many great wrestlers and they just come from all over, or is it a bit of both? I think it's some extent a bit of both, but I really believe we have the best roster in all of pro wrestling. And if you look at our top end wrestlers who make up effectively the first team of AEW, I think it's fair to say it's a very diverse group of wrestlers, but that's merit based. Mm. The best wrestlers are getting pushed to the top. They're getting those opportunities to wrestle on television, to be in the big matches. And our roster happens to be very diverse, but we have the best roster and uh, we put the best people in the best positions. And we've had a lot of great champions and great success stories here from diverse backgrounds, but that is a part of our roster. It just happens to be the best wrestlers. And it's thankfully a very diverse group too. Only, only thing I would say is more Jade. Yeah, Jade is great. Jade's <laughs> a great undefeated champion for us. And uh, she continues to dominate and step on people and crush the competition. So I recently spoke at, this is not to toot my own horn, but I've been at media conferences in Canada, Australia and France, mainly talking about fast. Um, it still seems to be the talk of the industry. It sort of took off about last last October at MIPCOM. And you were really ahead of the curve on this one. I tried. <laughs> you know, it's like a... It's good to know, right? Like, like he's not fake. He's not jumping on the bandwagon now. But yeah. it's really, you know, like you're getting interest from, you know, the Australian markets, the UK markets growing. I think the top five markets, all of the top five markets, four of them are English speaking, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of value. So um, I guess it, it makes it very easy to to move across when you're like mastering the, the US market. But uh, AW is only what the other than the NBA, and the MLS used to have a channel, but it went away when Apple got their rights still. But other than the NBA, you're the only domestic sports brand without any sort of free streaming presence. Is that something that we can you, you see changing in the not so distant future? I know you can't, I'm not asking you to push, you know, give any secrets, but I can't really say. I think that's a decision we need to make in part with our domestic media partners with Warner Brothers Discovery, who have great presence in the world of streaming and figure out what makes sense for us in terms of our partnership, because absolutely there's money on the table for streaming pro wrestling events. Right now we work with them and do pay-per-view streaming on Bleacher Report. And we have an international partnership with Fight to distribute the events. But domestically, Bleacher Report is, of course, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers yep. Discovery. And that Bleacher Report streaming service that is currently a home to AEW pay-per-view events. But I believe also there's a lot of great assets in the Warner Brothers Discovery family. And potentially we could fit in a number of different ways, a number of different streaming profiles. So there could be great opportunities there. Well, they've also, Warner Brothers Discovery only got into free streaming this year, mm -hmm. right? So they're they're getting their feet where, I mean, I'm I would imagine there being uh, like a Bleacher Report app. 
or sorry, a Bleacher Report channel soon. Um, Motor Trend, which is the mm-hmm. WBD brand, has already done a very successful launch and and is very happy with the results when I spoke to their president. So I can, I'm hoping we'll see like at least a greater thing from them, which I guess is what you're saying is if once you hear more or they, they see more, then they're going to probably embrace it more too. Yeah. Is- and as we built a great library of historical content, it presents more and more opportunities for a potential fast entry, I think. Oh yeah. Cause you just have the library. You don't want to put current stuff on, but you can put like, like we said before, talk, you know, yeah. talking uh, segments or like even older clips. Well, I think we've done now 187 episodes as we sit here, 188 yeah, 187 episodes of Wednesday Night Dynamite. We've done over 90 episodes of Friday Night Rampage. And there were hundreds of episodes between AEW Dark and AEW Dark Elevation. And we've also done many pay-per-view events and had this huge library, mm-hmm. hundreds of hours of streaming content. I also acquired Ring of Honor Wrestling and owned that streaming library with thousands of hours of content featuring some of the greatest wrestlers in the world, including a lot of the top stars in AEW and elsewhere. So I think uh, that library that we own presents a really great opportunity to build potential entries into free ad-supported streaming TV at some point. There's also premium streaming TV channels, which are the same, but featured within my like Paramount Plus is probably the best mm-hmm. example. It has about 25, 26 mm-hmm. that are only available if you pay. So there's the potential to sort of transfer that technology into a more pay, pay award product too, which is. Anyway. So that's past. Yeah. I, yeah. Past is one. Yeah. That's very interesting. So I hope you've learned something new again. I, well, I've learned from past <laughs> about you and now I'm learning about past. I don't want to be called the past master though. That's not a good name. <laughs> are you past master? Some will say that. Oh, that's I good. I believe that. Um, there was in Australia. They were like the master of fast. They flipped it, which was the master of fast. Now it makes perfect sense. Well, you may be the master of past now, <laughs> like Doctor Who. Um, where do you think the opportunities lie in in like the current media environment? I think uh, for AEW, as we've said, there are great opportunities in streaming. There's a big interest in streaming wrestling events, and we're expanding our calendar. I think that is a big area for us. Certainly, a lot of people are tapped into that right now. And for us, I think it's a big opportunity of, for more growth. And also, I think for TV programming, as you mentioned, TV networks looking for more sports. I think while rights fees for some other shows have declined, live sports have continued to increase. And it's a great opportunity for us as we approach our next deal. But also right now, we provide a lot of value to our media partners. And I think I take a lot of pride in that, being a great partner. And there's so many opportunities for AEW. We're less than four years in as a TV product. And I think we can continue to expand and grow in many ways. Certainly, we have a lot of merchandise licenses and continue to expand those also. It's uh, it's also interesting because, you know, we spoke about unscripted previously with the way your brands are and you've already added um you know you, you've added rampage you've added a new ring of honor show to to i know they're separate companies but you know wrestling itself is a, is is something that's able to expand more like right? the nhl can't create another league and there's only certain like rights windows and stuff so if, like when there's more interest you're actually uniquely placed among most of the sports to be able to create additional shows and service the the appetite for it absolutely and we also have the best team of wrestlers the roster of aew is unparalleled we have in my opinion the best roster of wrestlers in the world it is definitely entertaining so you know you get me every wednesday um has final question for you um has streaming made it easier for you to reach the international audience i know you kind of said it before, like for some of it like have you has there been instances where maybe you haven't had a tv deal but you've been able to kind of enter that country with a streaming deal absolutely right? absolutely and we have a number of those partnerships uh right now DAZN offers aew in a number of countries there's countries in europe where that's the best way to watch the show now and also we've got a uh, great partnerships Elsewhere, like I said, Fight TV works with us and we have the AEW Plus streaming service. So there's markets where we have the TV show on a delay, but you can watch the show live as it takes place in in the wee hours. And I think that's uh, also a great product that's seen awesome growth and also kind of built a test case for us as far as supporting a library of archive content on the site also and having a place where people can go back and watch old events which it does not really exist for us here in the u.s but there's great demand for right now yeah 
Well, I'm um, busy summer for you because you've got double or nothing, forbidden door, all in, you know, like following one after the other. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll let you get back to that. But thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations again on, on the ticket sales news and the performance of the Jags and the and, and Fulham as well. So well, thank you. Really appreciate it. Again. Thank you. It's great to see you again. And thanks everybody for uh, visiting with us today. And I really enjoyed catching up with you.